lot to cover. The strategy of global dominion is session two. I'm going to start in session two, the strategy of global dominion. And try to make, don't make it a habit to miss class, because it's really important to be in class, because there's a greater impartation when you're in class. Mm -hmm. And so some people can't make it, and they're going to watch it on video and all that, but it's much better in class. Atmosphere. Revelation 12, 4 and 5 says, And the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth to devour her child as soon as it was born. She bore a male child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. The apostolic is emerging in the midst of church transition. The Revelation 12 is a picture of a woman in labor, a transition, and a birthing process. Recently, greater numbers of intercessors have been laboring in prayer for something to happen. The emergence of the intercessors is a sign of transition. You know, I've been in a few meetings over the last few years where it was really stressed about the importance of intercession, so I really looked at our church and said, you know, we have people interceding, but it's not really organized. It wasn't really any um, regular meeting taking place of, of a group of people interceding, of course, individuals. But So uh, Lynette Wolf was willing to take on that role, and, you know, I think that's added a lot to our church to have intercessors. Yeah. Yeah. We meet every other week praying during services and different things. I think we can increase that. We always can increase that and do even more. But um, at least we have something started. Just got to build we, on it. We do pray. Do we have any such interceders? Is that the right way to say it? Doing service? Any preachers going on? Somewhat. But I think it can be more. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Somewhat. We need more. Because uh, we need crying out. We need trend. You know, that's how things get birth. There's people that are called to that. We're all called intercede. There are specific that people that that's their main ministry, is to birth things out. And, you know, I come to the intercession meeting once a year at the Christmas party for their food. It's good stuff, Dave. We, but, um, yeah, I was like praying it, saying it. Birthing is a long prayer and time, but people are called to that, and it's a very important thing. So I'm all for it. I want to see more of it. So if you're called to that, get involved. See Lynette Wolf, get in part of that intercessory team. Even if, you know, start praying in services. You know, I know in a church church I had in St. Croix, church I was part of, you know, for 15 minutes before the service, we would take tag team the ministers with mic and just pray in tongues. So when you come to church, you just hear tongues going mm -hmm. over the mic. So it's kind of hard to talk and... You know how it can be in church, all kinds of activity going on right before the service. You come in with an attitude of expectancy and, and forgot to move, and we need more of that. We need more of that. We need to have a higher expect expectancy and more of a reverence. And we fellowship is, is great, but it's a time and place for everything, you know, and let's wait till after service. <laughs> well, that, that's what um, I, when I'm in the during service worship because Donna had released a word a few years ago to me that's what kind of what I do when I stand up in the middle as part of for the whole church during mm -hmm. service. Yeah. During Everybody needs to in their intercession and have that attitude so let's be praying how we can catch that more, you know, as leaders, it's our job to release the vision so that people will catch it and we will have more of that taking place. It's very important to see the prophetic fulfilled got to birth it out and that's birth pain somebody got to be willing to do it because there's a war going on yeah there's a war in the spirit i'm going to you know. step out here for yeah. a second because god just gave me a vision yeah as you were saying that awesome. and in that vision god was saying use the show for us to call the people to worship now is the time mm -hmm. and call the people to worship at this time talking is done you can mingle after church, but have there be a call yeah. to worship. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Definitive. Defending for point to champion that out. <laughs> First thing, stop the talking. Let's get to worship. Let's get to prayer. Let's get our focus. We want God to move in this place today. Yeah. Okay, let's wait and we'll either. talk after. I don't think that wouldn't, that wouldn't be a bad thing. That wouldn't be a bad thing at all. Blow the shofars and call to worship. You know, you know, call to worship, come to prayer, call to worship, and then 
Okay. Yeah, they, they um, speak out that they will do it. They will absolutely do it because the people here, they honor the leadership of this mm -hmm. church. Yeah. Yeah. I just saw it. It was so funny because God gave me that vision as you were as you were speaking. And it and it was really, really pretty cool. It was very nice. And that's the heart of the apostolic is not just say, Oh, that's cool. No, what are we going to do about that's it? That's right. <laughs> <You know? laughs> that's what I told you. We'll talk to Pastor Steve tomorrow. <laughs> so we'll have our staff meeting and say, this is what we, you know, this is what Implement. the vision that God gave is that we need to, uh, you know, have a better deployment. Increase the atmosphere. People come in. Expectancy. You know, I know Lori is part of that. I see Lori always coming up forward. There was a time here at Praise that everybody came up and they were, yeah. you know, hungry for God to move. Just more of a, a, a expect expectancy, and it's not been as it was. <laughs> so we got to get to what it was, and much more. When is the meeting that you talked about that Lynette leads? I have uh, every other Wednesday. In the morning. Yes, ten to twelve. Okay. And sometimes they do a Friday, I think. Okay. So we we'll see her. Okay, the apostolic okay, case said that, that, that the scripture shows an enemy committed to fighting against man's destiny and dominion on the earth. Okay, Jesus is victorious, Satan's defeated, but he's not going to lie down unless we force him. You know, if, usually if somebody wants to get away with a crime, which most criminals do, <laughs> even if they're caught, they're not just going to say, oh, you got me. They're going to run, or they're going to, you know, you got to force a little it. bit of fighting. You've got to force the authority. And that's our role now. If Jesus has the victory, we got to enforce it. Mm -hmm. The enemy's going, since he's still around, until the, until Jesus returns and things are finalized and he's the millennial reign, he's still around and we got to put him in his place. That's our thought. When we see him act up, we put him in his place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> see somebody acting up at church? Don't put them in place, but you put the enemy in place. Amen. In St. Croix, it happened a lot. People would you have people come, and all of a sudden, you see somebody running around the church doing some kind of, you know, um, witchcraft mm -hmm. stuff. And wow. Ushers, get them out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We'd actually, we actually had a yeah. person on in the front, both sides. Sure. <laughs> you know, just had that the thing going off. on to yeah. take them out when the time comes. Right. Take them out. Now they call them. You know, security, it's but no in down south, you you would have to in certain areas because it wasn't like the enemy was just going to be like, oh, okay, you're over here for now. We'll wait. They would come in. They would come in the church, and they would, you know, come in with their garb sometimes, or they would come in with, with, you know, whatever they were using, or they would try to whatever. And, except for certain churches where they would cross the street, but other spots you'd have to you have to stop in. Wow. We should have the atmosphere. Yeah. The atmosphere should be so filled with the presence of God through wow. us, mm -hmm. prayers and worship, that whatever is in people is coming out. Amen. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. You know, we want to mm -hmm. see more deliverance. How yeah. often do we see deliverance take place? Mm -hmm. This one of these rooms should be always being used. Take them out. Put them mm -hmm. in the room. Mm -hmm. <laughs> handle it. Hey, you know, handle it. Deliver them. Amen. Handle right then and there. Yeah. Amen. Take him to the side. There should be a side deliverance room. He's the thing we want to see. We want to believe God for. Well, the scripture shows so there's an enemy. He's at work. And our job is to shut him up. More than coincidental, both Genesis 3 and Revelation 12 tells the story of a man, a woman, and a serpent, dragon, communicating. In the two accounts, the issue is the dominion and authority given to mankind. And, you know, Satan will continue to have dominion if we let him. Mm -hmm. But he, those keys of authority were taken away from him. Mm -hmm. So he don't have the right, but if we let him, he'll use it. Mm -hmm. So what do we got to do? Mm -hmm. Take the authority. Yeah. Jesus gave us authority. Yeah. Yeah. So in right. his name. Right. Get the handcuffs out and <laughs> you know, put them in place. Lock them, up. Lock them up. The apostolic is to restore the authority and power that God gave Adam to the church. I don't know about you, but this is how, when I am engulfed in the presence of God, when I completely tune out for myself and I come out of my flesh and I'm filled with the Spirit, that's what I feel authority. And that's, that's the, some people just feel God's presence and feel so good and they just want to rest in His presence. Yeah. I get authority and I want to do something with that's it. That's right. Yeah. You know, I want to see something happen. I want to, you know, sometimes I'm even 
in an atmosphere, somebody preaching, they're going, you know, and I just feel such authority. He's like, I'm on the mic, I want to do something, I want to you know, release something, I want to, you know, I get stirred up. And, and I'm a laid back, relaxed guy, but trust me, when the Holy Spirit comes upon me, and I'm still, I don't want to be relaxed anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to rest in the Lord, but I'm going to walk in authority. Amen. Amen. That's <clears throat> the apostolic is to restore the authority and power that God gave Adam to the church. The apostolic embraces the authority that God gave to his people. Authority is the ability to command. Power, to command. You can always tell when I'm commanding. really uh, <laughs> commanding. You, I speak much more authoritatively when I'm really filled. And I begin to I shake a little bit. <laughs> you know, there's a little shake going on when I feel the authority. Like I want to do something. My wife will tell me, stop shaking. It's called, uh, it's called, it's being, the Holy it's Spirit. called being quickened. Yeah, and it doesn't mean you have to act all weird, you know, and all that. But you know, it's just it's just something yeah. you gotta do. You gotta do yeah. something. You gotta enforce. So, you gotta right. rule and reign. See. Power is a force. <laughs> the church is ever to come into this glorious restoration. We have to cast Satan out of the church. That's right. And expect him to be in certain places. But even in those places, our job is to get him out of those places. Mm -hmm. They shouldn't be in the church. Yes. Um, the part of this is the apostolic is to restore the authority and the power that God gave Adam mm -hmm. to the church. Should it be Jesus gave Jesus? Or should it be Adam? Yeah, that's kind of confusing to me. Are they referring to the first two, to Adam? Just the Genesis 1 when God gave one Adam. Right. him. I'll give you, a, you know, I'll give you dominion, you know, and subdue the earth. Right. And all that, that Genesis 1 was now given to Adam. To Adam. Yeah. But have we moved beyond that now? Is it Jesus that has the authority? Yeah. Or is it the new Adam? Right. So should we still well, be talking about... And remember, the church <coughs> is nothing without the head. And but Jesus right. is the head. Right, right. The authority right. comes from him, and the authority must is delegated. Okay. So when we step out and walk in authority that wasn't delegated, we can't expect results right. Right. from God. So we know that we're in partnership with Christ. We're one with him. So it's really his authority, not ours. But he's allowed us from his mercy to, to, to be one with him right. and to enjoy his authority. That's why this gave Adam. This didn't make sense to me. It it's sense. restoring it back to the beginning of the fall. So it's res the restoration is back to where it fell with Adam. So it's should, but, but I thought Jesus is where we're at now. Right, but it's restored to that spoken moment of time when God said, you have dominion on the earth. So yeah. when Christ did, he restored it back to that Okay. Original authority. He gave back us the keys to, back to but Adam it's, or Jesus. It's given to us now, but okay. the restoration, the work is retroactive, so to speak, to that moment. Gotcha. Does that make sense? We're still, we're Not still Adam. Really. In, in other words, <laughs> what I, I think what, what, what is trying to be betrayed or what's trying to be said. Okay. When God gave that authority to Adam, Adam didn't lose it per se he gave it away so he, lost so he, he, he gave it away he gave it away we all we all know that right so when god took it back he gave it back to the rightful owner which is adam which is humanity we have that authority but we're not called um adam anymore we're called the church so when it says okay so he's given back uh gave power uh, that god gave to adam that first power that he gave to adam he's given it to the church He's not. He's not giving it to Jesus. Okay. You yeah, understand what I mean? But, but Jesus so, died. Jesus died. Yeah. He went back. He went back into hell, and he grabbed the, the authority, yeah. and he gives right. it to Peter. And Peter is one of the where it was said possible. He was supposed to have authority over this earth. The kingdom through Jesus, not not over. Yeah, because own. again, the church is the body of Christ. Right. Body of Christ. And so right. we are nothing without the right. head. Right. 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 So again, this authority is only possible through the union. But we as a body have it ahead. I guess just oh Adam, this Adam kind of threw me off. And I there think is too, like if you remove the dash mm -hmm. and put a comma, right. I think it'll make sense to you. Okay. Because I see how you're thinking. Right. And so just take a second for yourself and remove the dash and insert a comma. Okay. And I think you'll be okay. It's like when they teach kids about commas, 
um, you know, what's that thing? Thomas save lives. Like, let's let's eat grandma, or let's eat grandma. Oh. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's so like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So if you, uh, exactly. You so if you put a comma in there instead of a dash, it will make total sense to you. Can I just take Adam out? <laughs> no, because then it won't make the description. No. <laughs> this is bothering me. Yeah. So Adam, Adam, Adam is doing right? sin. Jesus wait a minute. Wait, wait, no, Adam, why why let, me, let me say something again. There's a scribe in the New Testament, but yeah. Jesus is the yes, second, second Adam. Adam. Yeah. Yeah. But if you, um, if you okay, all right, you can say it like that. The yes, second Adam, Adam. Right. but not and Adam. What this, can. what I think this sentence really <laughs> says is the apostolic that Adam had. That power and authority, he's restored to the church through Christ. Through Christ. Yeah. Through Christ. So if there's comma instead of a dash, you could rework that sentence and make it like that, and then it will make sense to you. Okay. All right. I'll leave it alone. <laughs> <laughs> six, ten to thirteen. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Yep. Okay. Okay. Be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Should be our daily desire. Mm -hmm. First thing we wake up. Mm -hmm. We put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, the principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, mm -hmm. spiritual wickedness in high places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand. Mm -hmm. Okay, we mm -hmm. get strong in the Lord by doing what? Being with the Lord. Mm -hmm. The more we be with the Lord, the more strong we are in the Lord. And and a lot of it, though, you know, I was once a time where I had to think, you know, I had to spend all these countless hours seeking to be in the Lord. But I've learned that you just declare, I am in the Lord. And I take the Lord with me. It doesn't take away, though, <laughs> much time we can give to prayer, but God also wants us to move and wants us to act, right. yeah. and He wants us to take us with Him, and we're one with Him. Yeah. So we we don't we're not far from God. Yeah. We're yeah. with God and we're in God, and it's always. So we don't have to work our way to get God to come near us. Yes, yeah, as you draw near to God, you'll draw near to to us. But that's just because of us, not because of Him. Right. So we just got to confess it. God, you're with me. And be. And just be it. And just just be. Do what he, let him do what he does. Apostolic imparts purpose. The purpose is power and authority over evil principalities and powers. Mm -hmm. The question I put here was, how much time are we investing into in intercession and in warfare? You know, how much time do we really give? When we see the things going on in this world, does it move us to pray? Like really pray or we just throw something up? Without, you know, hey, look what happened there. And um, for a lot of that, we're going to pray, Lord, and you know, help those people that, you know, the families. And like but are we really in a warfare? You know, really stand in the gap and really hear from God what to pray, how to pray. Mm -hmm. How to use the arm. I don't do it enough, yeah. I'm telling yeah. you that, straight mm -hmm. up. Yeah. You know, not enough warfare for the time I give to warfare. Putting on armor doesn't make you a warrior unless you take dominion, you attain nothing. Wow. You know, let's take a football team, you put on the gear, and you sit on the sideline. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's the players in the game that matter. Yeah, they're the ones that won the game. It's their play. So are we <coughs> on the sideline, got the armor on, but we're not doing anything with it? <coughs> you know, in the spirit, we got the armor, but what are we doing with it? Are we using that sword? Right. You know, are we releasing God's word into different matters going on in the world around us? There are legions of angelic and demonic beings over the territories and cities we live in. In the spirit, if we eyes were opened up. So this is only one time, and I don't have a lot of dreams, but one time I was given a dream and my eyes were opened. And I was at a crusade, and there was a tent, and there was I was not up front. I was actually in the audience. And, in my, in the, and all of a sudden, my eyes were opened, and I began to see the spirit world. I began to see the demonic influence of all the people around me. And then I felt the authority of Jesus Christ come upon me. I've never felt like that. I've never felt it. It was in a dream. I could feel, it was like I was completely consumed with Jesus. It was the best feeling ever. The most authority ever. And I just went from one person to the other, just casting demon, casting demon, casting demon, casting demon. And it was not a work. It was not a, 
There was no war, really. Mm -hmm. It was just me knowing my authority That's and right. then walking That's it out and just casting it. And I was like, Lord, let this come to being sooner than later. I want to see it. <laughs> you may have actually been there and didn't know it. You may have been transported in the yeah. middle of the night and have been somewhere. Might have. If you could cool. feel that sensation. To it was, degree. and I never had it before like that. Mm -hmm. So it's like, yeah, it mm -hmm. Have that again. It's mm -hmm. awesome. Mm -hmm. Only two times have I felt one time was actually live, though. That was live, too, but transported, so possibly. And this was in a service in the Sons of God Church where I got saved. And the um, Spirit of God came upon me. This time was compassion. And so as the compassion came upon me, I, everybody I looked at, it's like I saw through them. I saw their hurt and their pain. And they began to weep and to pray over people. And it was just so overwhelming. It was awesome. That's awesome. I loved it. Mm. Um, so the apostolic imparts wisdom and strategy for the displacement of evil governments to subdue principalities and powers. Okay, and all this though, we got to make sure. Some people can get caught up in so much spiritual warfare, but that they're not connected to the head. Mm -hmm. So they're just praying, warring, whatever they think comes to their mind, and whatever, you know. That's not how we do it. We connect to the head, and the, it, everything comes from the head. Let it come down. The apostolic is all about putting down evil strongholds, replacing them with godly governments. You know you've won the battle when your troops can march in. Mm -hmm. That's how you know when we've prayed and interceded and done warfare, then things just move. All of a sudden, Atlantic City opens up. The Spirit of God comes in. And change. change happens. Change happens. <laughs> Chains fall off. Yeah. Change happens. 2 Corinthians 10.4 For the weapons of warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. The word warfare defined in Vine's lexicon, lexicon is the art of generalship. Figuratively, the word warfare means apostleship, an apostolic career, an apostolic agenda. The Roman apostle, where it came from, his role was when Roman took over when Rome took a territory, the apostle who was sent by the governor. Mm -hmm was now to come in, and his job was to infiltrate, to implement the culture of Rome into that taken culture. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah. That's where the phrase, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. Because Rome was wherever the apostolic authority was for Rome. I knew better. So that's our responsibility as <laughs> kingdom yeah. into every area of society around us. When in Rome, do as the Romans do. Scared. That's it. That's us. Apostolic generals have a warfare agenda that includes power, authority, and strategy. If God is emerging apostles, that means we're in the end times. And the strategies God I believe, gave me for this year for the church, which we're going to put a banner probably this week, out of side as you go out over the door is each one, reach one. And just get people more of a mindset of, you know, I have a role to play. I need to reach at least one. Start with one. There's somebody that I'm called to reach. If each of us reached one, the church, and it's not about the church, it's about the kingdom of God would double. Mm -hmm. Every year. We just reach one. <coughs> the church needs apostolic strategy to defeat the three great powers used by the world. <coughs> Dictators have used three ways to control millions. Violence, wealth, and knowledge. <laughs> The most powerful of these forces is knowledge. With knowledge, the others can be obtained. See, that's people are bound because of ignorance. Mm -hmm. So in certain, in certain countries, they limit the knowledge, education. Mm -hmm. and when I go to Liberia, it's one reason it's so backwards in Liberia, because most people don't have an education. The schools you go to, they don't even have resources. They just have school, they have students, but there's no resources. There's nothing to teach them, except whatever little that they know. Mm -hmm. And the good schools, it costs a lot of money, and they don't have it. That's how you keep people bound. Yes, sir. How will we ever take over the world if everyone is preaching? Because you see people even with, without education, even with um, spiritual uh, knowledge, you see tons of nations in Africa. you got churches galore. you got churches of 100,000, 500,000 million members, and yet they're poverty and and just bound to sickness disease and government wicked rule and all that kind of stuff and yet the people are saved no education no knowledge just preaching yep 
that's a spiritual mindset with no earthly, um, no earthly good. It's, one of the statements I wrote down here was a lot of intelligent young Christians are idle, waiting for God to send them someplace, waiting for the pastor to recognize them and put them in a position, and they need to be in the universities. They need to be educated. They need to be prepared to take mountains. That's where young people need to be. Unless it's clear that they're called into a five-fold ministry, they need to be in those mountains. And even we, ourselves, I am right now educating myself because I believe we're called to have a, be a community center, and I need the knowledge of what knowledge I would need to oversee something that is, when the government falls short, we step in. Amen. Amen. So when people are battling all kinds of major sicknesses and diseases, and, right. and uh, mental illness is huge right now, mm -hmm. and you can go to this psychiatrist and that psychiatrist, but when somebody needs deliverance, the psychiatrist, the government program is not going to do it. Right. So we so need to have, get money. to the place where we have those things in place, okay. and they're professional, Amen. but they're anointed. That's right. That's so I'm preparing myself just to at least have the knowledge so I can delegate right. responsibilities in the in that area. So, That's so I'm doing funny. secular school for that. She was just, I she her um, heart's desire, which is one thing she wants to do. When we were praying, when you the, the what you just told us to do. And God gave me a vision of um, exactly what you just said for her to do. You get the business plan. You put into place the um, what you need. People for health care. People for this. People for that. And then you put in a blank underneath that. And God's going to give you the person to fill each one of that. And then I said to her, under that, you're going to have one, two, three. Exactly what you want them to do and how to do it. And one, two, three. So if you want to sit down with me, you don't have to go through all that education. <laughs> <laughs> I'll save you some money. <laughs> yeah. okay, so I, 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 I don't really like it a lot of times, especially this English 102 class is beating me up. I use most of my classes, from my experience, I can just ace it easy, but yeah, you know, it's not like grammar. Yeah. So poor grammar. Yeah. Those teachers are making me feel like I'm in high school again. The I same thing that the English teacher did in high school is she tell me the right same back. thing. Man, this is no <laughs> worse. I'll get you through it. Don't worry about it. I'll get you through 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 it. We're almost, we're out of time. We need to finish off. Finish up here. So, you know, Apostolic will increase the knowledge level of the church. I've always been one keen on no one wanting to know everything that's going on all around. You know, I just... I want to know things that's happening. So I want to know what's going on in the world. I'm just keen to that. Also, people are usually that way. They want to know what's happening. They want to be able to educate people in a bigger way, you know, using the Bible, but expanding on how it can penetrate in different areas of, of life. Um, intellectual, sophisticated knowledge is one of the greatest tools an army can possess. The army of God must not only possess spiritual knowledge, but also knowledge of the secular arenas. How will we ever take over the world if everyone is preaching? We need knowledge in every realm. Mm -hmm. Put a quote here. More than half the world lies under the threat of violence, while the masses mm -hmm. live in poverty without much of any opportunity for evaluation, for education. <coughs> Second Timothy, how many missionaries go and actually just go into an area and we send them just to educate people? Because that's such a huge need. We do the Bible schools, but how about just a school? Cool. You know, teachers, missionaries, retired teachers, that would be great. There's a religious spirit that decrees that all valuable Christian service is a function of clergy. This is contrast to the Bible, which declares that God anoints men to get wealth, gain knowledge, overcome violence, and take over governments. Mm -hmm. You see, throughout the Bible, God anointed people to build the temple, mm -hmm. he anointed people, he anointed Joseph to to be second in command of Egypt, yes. you know, government is throughout the Bible. People that walk with God, most of them were wealthy. Yeah. <coughs> the scripture. Will some people be po poverty, depending on your calling and your purpose? Yeah. But if God's, if our heart is right, God will bless us with whatever we need to accomplish His will. The kingdom of God touches the church. The church flows into the marketplace, and kingdom dominions established on earth. Yeah. Apostolic strategy uses divine plans to accomplish divine purposes, not just a lot of good ideas. 
The Apostolic will release divine strategies for all fivefold ministers for growth and development of personal ministries and expansion of the kingdom of God. That's what I love. I love to see each of you step out into what God's called you to do. Amen. We're thankful to God. Um, you know, we have this, this sexual recovery group that just started. Mm -hmm. We have this um, cancer yeah. recovery group that just started. Mm -hmm. You know, other people there. Getting ready. David stepping into his thing. And, you met. Mm -hmm. We've got a lot going on. It's awesome stuff. So more and more. <coughs> Paul said his whole apostolic agenda in general was about warfare. Without warfare, there's no victory. Among the Jews, the word apostle didn't have much meaning. It was an agricultural term that meant sent one. Okay, da -da -da. Contemporary problems with the word apostle, it's minimized to just sent one regardless of who is sent or where or for what purpose. It's over deified so that no real human can ever attain it. Bad theology and understanding. Okay? The apostolic is not that big of a deal. Jesus is a big deal. He's the apostle. Don't think like it's, oh, the apostle. The apostolic. Like the highest rank, the highest this. Yep, the apostle and prophet, the foundation of the church. The foundation of the church is always, the foundation of a building is always down. It's always on the bottom, pushing everybody, everything up. That's their role. To be on the bottom, to be in the back. You might have to take a step forward for a time. It's only to grab everybody, push Teach. them forward, and then step back. Teach them what's true. So I'm hoping in five, ten years, my need to be up front will be needed no more. Because there will be so many others. Mm -hmm. So I just take a step back and yes, support, so. oversee, and do other things. That God leads me. Um, Let's fill in those blanks. And that will be it. Not really it. Scripture shows an enemy committed to fighting against man's destiny of destiny in the earth. In the two accounts of Genesis 3 and Revelation 12, what are the issues? Dominion and authority. The apostolic is to restore the authority and power that God, here we go again, gave Adam to the church. <laughs> Without a comma or anything. Dash. Authority is the ability to command pow, command. Power is a force. The apostolic imparts wisdom and strategy for the displacement of evil governments to subdue principalities and powers. Displacement strategy, you know you've won the battle when your troops can march in. Define the word warfare according to Vine's lexicon. Art of generalship. What are three aspects of the authority, the apostolic general's warfare agenda? Power, authority, and strategy. What have the three great powers in the world been? Violence, wealth, and knowledge. Apostolic, apostolic strategy is not just good ideas. It's use, it uses divine plans to accomplish divine purposes. What I was going to do as a group, which we're not going to do, but we're going to start next Monday with, is we're going to do some warfare prayer as a group. So next Monday, we're going to start off with warfare prayer. We're going to grab hands in a circle and just... Right. Pray as God leads. Mm -hmm. Dominion and authority prayers. But only as we hear. Mm -hmm. We don't get any of that. We don't pray. We're only going to pray if we hear something. You ever been in that circle where nobody hears anything and somebody just starts praying because you should pray because that's a religious thing to do? Right. And then they pray long. <laughs> it's really not that powerful. You just want to be done. I'm one of those kind of guys. I'm in my if it, if it's not God, I'm like ready to be out. Amen. If I go to church service and it's really not God, I'm ready to be out. If I'm praying in a prayer gathering and it's not God, I'm ready to be done. I get antsy. I get like, this is boring. I'd rather sit down and watch football. I'm going to go home and watch the champions. So, <laughs> Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you. Peace.